Thanks, Jaime. My name is Kelly and I will be your financial planning coordinator. So I'll be helping you through the financial aid process. So the first thing I'd like to touch on is the different types of financial aid. When you complete the FAFSA, the free application for federal student aid, we are determining your eligibility for the federal Pell Grant, the federal SEOG grant, and if you're a Pennsylvania resident, the state FIA grant. We also have scholarships, which are on our website, and I will get into on a future slide. There's also loans. We have student loans, we have parent loans, and then there's private loans that students can borrow with any creditworthy co-signer. So to start the process, you will complete the FAFSA form. For those of you considering attending Central Penn in either January or April, you will be completing the 2020-2021 FAFSA form. And for those of you considering us for summer and beyond, you'll be completing the 21-22 FAFSA. The students considering us for winter or spring will use their 2018 taxes to answer all of the questions, and the students considering us for summer and beyond will be using their 2019 taxes to answer all of the questions. And then most students here at Central Penn do borrow student loans to help bring down the cost of the tuition bill, and you'd be completing your student loans at the website below. So what is a FAFSA? The FAFSA determines your financial need. You can list up to 10 schools, so only the schools you list will get access to it. So once you select Central Penn and submit it, we typically get it within three to five business days. And for those of you starting in summer or fall, we are hoping to have financial aid award letters out to you in mid-December. A FAFSA is something that you will need to complete each year. They wanna see the previous year's taxes to determine your financial aid eligibility. The great the thing is, if you're not sure where your taxes are, you can't remember where you filed them at, you can use what's called an IRS data retrieval tool, and you can actually pull all the information from the IRS directly onto your FAFSA with your FSA ID. So what goes on the FAFSA form? For those of you that are dependent, it'll be your information and your parents' information. For those of you that are independent, it'll be your information and your spouse if you're married. If you're questioning whether you're independent or dependent, the government requires that you meet the below criteria to be considered independent. You must be at least 24, a veteran, enrolled in a graduate or professional program, which would be a master's degree or above, be married, a ward of the court, or have legal dependents that you provide more than 50% support for. If you don't meet any of that criteria, you do need to provide a parent on the FAFSA form for us to award financial aid. We also get questions on what information goes on the FAFSA. So it will be you and your parents. If your parents are separated, it will be you and the parent that you live with. And if they are remarried, we'll need their spouse's information as well. The FAFSA wants the household information on the FAFSA form. The one most important thing I can tell you about financial aid is meeting our deadlines. So Central Penn has a deadline to have your FAFSA submitted by March 1st. We do this because Pennsylvania has a hard deadline of May 1st. If you do not file your FAFSA by May 1st, you will not be considered for a state fee grant. So we have our deadline early to ensure that all of our students are meeting the May 1st state grant deadline. You do not have to be accepted to submit the FAFSA form. You can submit it now, and then once you are accepted, we will work on getting that award that are out to you. And again, for those of you who are looking at winter or spring, you'll be using your 2018 taxes to answer all of the questions. And for those of you looking at summer or fall, you'd be using your 2019 taxes to answer all of the questions. I want to give you an idea of what you're looking at grant-wise. All of the figures on here are based off of the current FAFSA year. The grant amounts will change and we will hopefully get that information from the government here shortly. But for those of you who file the FAFSA, if you get, have an expected family contribution between zero and 5712, you would qualify for a federal Pell Grant somewhere between $639 and $6,345 for the year. The federal SEOG grant is a limited grant through the federal government. You must be Pell Grant eligible. You must have your FAFSA on file by March 1st. And the awards vary anywhere from $225 to $1,500. And then for those of you who are Pennsylvania residents, again, I cannot emphasize how important it is to file the FAFSA now. It must be considered by May 1st to be considered for the grant. The FIA grant does require that you maintain academic progress. So if you were at another college and you're transferring to Central Penn, we would have to see those transcripts and ensure that you had a 2.0 and passed 66% of your classes before we can award a state grant here. Scholarships are a very important part of any financial aid 
package. And our scholarships are currently open and they're on our website at centralpen.edu. They just require an essay. So if you meet the GPA requirement or any of their requirements listed, it's just an essay that you need to be submit. It is viewed by three different departments and then they are awarded based off of the information on the essay. There's no letters of recommendation needed. It is simply essay based. We will also match outside scholarships up to $1,000. So if you would receive a scholarship from your church, community, employer, parents employer, or your high school, let us know and we will add a matching scholarship for $1,000 onto your account. I do like to touch base on the student loan process. Student loans are a reality for most students that attend here. When you complete the entrance counseling and master promissory note, we will check your eligibility for subsidized and unsubsidized loans. And it's important to know the difference. If you have an award letter that says subsidized loans, the government will pay the interest on those while you're in school. Any unsubsidized loans, you are responsible for the interest while you're in school. You don't have to pay it, but we highly suggest if you can that you do so that when you are done with school, you're only paying back what you borrowed, not what you borrowed plus the interest. The government does limit how much you can borrow. So for a freshman dependent student for the year, you're only eligible for $5,500. And if you're independent, you'd be eligible for $9,500. As you progress through your degree, then you would qualify for additional student loan funds each year. For what the grants, loans, and scholarships don't cover, we do have federal Parent PLUS loans that parents can borrow in their name to cover the remaining balance. What's great about these is, again, there's no repayment until six months after the student graduates or stops attending. It is a credit check, and if you are eligible, you can borrow up to the cost of attendance, meaning if the student does have a tuition bill for $1,000, you can borrow $1,000 plus an extra money for books. If a parent is not eligible for this loan, we can then increase the student loan to the independent amount. So a freshman would then get 9,500 if the parent didn't qualify based off their credit for the Parent PLUS loan. I like to wrap up with the textbooks. Textbooks are a very important part of any uh, schooling and what makes you successful here at Central Penn. The only program where you will see textbooks on your tuition bill is our business program. So for all other programs, you need to be prepared to pay for textbooks out of pocket. If you're in our business program, any of your business or accounting classes, you will see that we charge you for the textbooks on your tuition bill and your books will be waiting for you in Blackboard once you sign on to the class. We estimate the books cost about 350 to $450 a term. You can over borrow money and get book vouchers that you can use at our bookstore to help you with books. Otherwise, this is an expense you do need to be prepared for um, each term. And typically our bookstore opens about a month before classes begin. And the last thing as Jaime was mentioning is we do have free housing. So what free housing is, we cover the cost of the actual super suite for your first year. So you would still be responsible for the utilities in your meal plan and you would start when you start. So if you would start in our summer term, you would get four terms of free housing. If you would start in our fall term, you would get three terms of free housing. In winter, you'd get two terms of free housing. In our spring term, you would get one term of free housing. Once you're accepted, we will email you a housing contract. You would just need to sign it saying you understand you must maintain a 2.0. You cannot be placed on disciplinary probation. You do need to participate in any manding, mandatory housing programs and take 12 credits. You also do need to be continuously enrolled. So you can't take a term off of housing and then come back and have the free housing. This is all of my contact information. So I'll be reaching out to students as you become accepted, as we're able to process financial aid, especially for those of you looking at summer and fall. Again, once you submit the FAFSA form, you should be receiving award letters from us mid-December. And again, those will be emailed to you. And then if you have questions, please feel free to reach out either by phone or email. And I will turn it back over to Lisa.